Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through everything new, all the new features and changes coming to iOS 15 inside of Developer Beta 2. And we've got some big changes to talk about. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this thing. I've got two phones set up here uh, to demonstrate a lot of this. We've got this guy, my iPhone 12 Pro Max running iOS 15 developer beta 2 and then I have the smaller the green uh, iPhone 12 that is running developer beta 1 so we can compare the developer beta 2 on the left phone compared to the uh, developer beta 1 here on the right hand phone well at least when we're looking at the fronts of them it's on the left and the right but Regardless, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. The first big feature that has changed with developer beta 2 is Apple has finally delivered SharePlay. So SharePlay is a new feature. When you FaceTime somebody, you can share your content. You can watch a video together. You can play a game together. Uh, you can share your screen, offer tech support. Whatever it is that you wanna do, you can now kind of share that experience over SharePlay. And developer apps can build this in too. So you can play games and such with other people like in real time, sharing screens. It's super, super cool and we're very excited about it. So it wasn't working in developer beta one, but in developer beta two, Apple has finally delivered that. So we'll be going into more detail on SharePlay in a different video. Uh, you know, right now, I'm not gonna jump on a FaceTime call with anybody from the Apple Insider team. So right now we got settings, but we'll show you a lot more very, very soon. We also have some new icons coming around uh, this time. First, you can see the maps icon. If we look at the maps on the left and the right, you can see that new icon. It's a little bit larger. There's a circle around it. We saw this actually in Apple's keynotes during DubDub, and now here it is in the beta. So you can see the differences there. We also have a new books icon. So if we pull down, we search for books in each of these, you can see a little bit of the difference if I zoom in a lot because it's, it's really subtle actually. But the new books icon is just a little more rounded, less sharp corners but otherwise the colors everything pretty much the same so updated books icon here in developer beta 2 jumping into messages apple delivered another feature that was promised but not present in developer beta 1 and that is clothing from emoji so if we go into messages and look at the emoji if we go uh, on the end there was headwear you can see headwear was on both of them but now developer beta 2 has a whole new category for clothing so if you go into clothing, you have your color options there at the top. There's a primary, secondary, and tertiary color options. So we make the body, let's go red, love some red. Uh, maybe second one, just do orange. And our tertiary color, third color, we'll do yellow to create some clothing colors for sure right there. And as you scroll down, you can see all the different options. There's like a bunch of cultural ones. There's just t-shirts. Oh, there's a regular there at the bottom. You know, just t-shirts. Like I could pull some of these off up oh, there's a hoodie we got hoodies uh but yeah so you can go ahead choose your clothing that you're looking for and then at the top you can swipe through and see all the different uh, characters that you can do all the different faces and poses that you can do with having a body on your memoji character versus just having the head so clothing options come into memoji moving to the watch app and yes we're going to talk about the apple watch here in our ios video because apple introduced this new portraits face in uh, watch OS 8, but it wasn't there in beta 1. In beta 2, Apple did add the portraits face to watch OS 8, but you can't set it up on your Apple Watch. You actually have to set it up and configure over here on your iPhone. So if we go into the actual watch application, we can go down to the face gallery to find it, or I can edit the portraits face that I've already created, and I can choose the photos for that face. You can choose up to 24 different portrait photos to feature on that watch face. Uh, you can choose those there. Then you can choose the style of the typography, classic, modern, or rounded. And then there are two different complications you can set for the middle date and the bottom date. So that's how you can set up a portrait watch face on your iPhone for Apple Watch in watchOS 8 Developer Beta 2. Launching weather for the first time in developer beta 2, we see a new splash screen coming to the app. Kind of walks you through some of the new features, stuff that Apple has pulled over from Dark Sky. Uh, so new splash screen going on for weather. And then if we go all the way down to the bottom here, you can see we have new options to show up. So we have report issue and manage notifications. And manage notifications actually on each cart. So for each city that you have set up, there's that new manage notification that button there at the bottom. Before we did not have either of those located at the bottom, just open in maps. So that is different here in developer beta 2. And if we look at the widget 
for weather, it has these new sliders, not really sliders, but this new visual demonstration of the temperature range for that day and how it compares to the other days. So it's a more glanceable way to see the weather from that widget, which, you know, it's perfect. Notes has gotten a new splash screen again, walking through some of those new features that you can expect. We have another new feature for Notes on iPad, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. We also saw some changes to the private relay text, uh, just how Apple was wording it inside of the settings app. It used to say like something about like use broader area, but now it's more of like your general location. So just some changes to text in private relay. Apple also says they fixed some bugs with private relay that were affecting users. So it should be more reliable for those using private relay in developer beta two. If you have a queue of songs inside of Apple Music, if you long hold on one of them now, there's a new option to move to the top. So previously you could of course queue songs, but now there's move to top option, which kind of like play next or something, just moving to the top of the queue. When navigating in maps, you have the option to, of course, report an incident, and they've changed the verbiage here a little bit. So when you're reporting an incident, there's the speed check, hazard, and it was accident. But people don't like the word accident because it implies that, you know, no one was at fault, and there's a whole debate about that situation. But specifically in terms of what we care about, Apple has just changed it from accident to crash, which I think is more representative. iCloud settings have been slightly reorganized here in developer beta 2. Uh, if we look at the focus, the new focused feature, Apple has changed the UI a little bit. So where it has turn on automatically, it used to be in just kind of one block there. Now it's set up into multiple blocks and they also have uh, the little plus button has changed. So it was like that whole wide thing, but now it's made smaller in the little corner there. So that has been updated. And if we go to shortcuts, shortcuts has a new option to see what's on your screen or read what's on your screen or get input from what's on the screen. And so right now it works in Safari and it's pretty cool. So as an example, say you were creating your own custom share sheet, your own sharing options. Uh, before what you'd have to do was you'd have to like make the shortcut and then you'd have to run it from the share sheet. So you'd go to share the website you're on from the share sheet and choose your shortcut and it would grab it from uh, the clipboard essentially or from the, you know, the page you were on when you were sharing and you could use that to share however you wanted, disseminate that information. But with this new update, it can actually see what's on your screen. So if you're running something from Spotlight Search or any place else, or you know even Siri, it's able to see what's on your screen and pull that in. So if you run a shortcut that is trying to share something and you run it for Safari through Spotlight or Siri or anything like that, it can actually see what's on your page and will pull in that URL and then allow you to share it how you want it. So it just basically makes it a little bit easier to get information and developers can build this into their apps as well uh, to pull information into a shortcut. So this could be interesting. We could see some new shortcuts coming down the line. Now, let's go ahead and rid ourselves of our iPhones here. Let's go ahead and move over to the iPad to see how Apple has upgraded iPadOS 15 because yeah, we definitely got a few things to talk about here. So the first thing that I really appreciated is Apple allows you now to invoke a quick note just by using your finger. Before, you'd have to use your Apple Pencil and you drag up from that bottom right hand corner and that would open up a quick note. Now, you can do so with just your finger. So I just sweep from the corner, boom. Quick note, you can do it anywhere, home screen, in an app, in Safari, all that stuff. So it works great, you just now use your finger instead of an Apple Pencil. Um, other things we saw, App Library came to iPad with iPad OS 15, and with this beta, we have new categories. So we open App Library, we have new one for health and fitness and information and reading, basically news. So Apple's added a couple of new categories to App Library here on iPad. If we go to uh, dark mode inside of Safari, the sidebar is no longer as dark as it was. It's kind of hard to tell if I grab my other iPad and compare. It was just darker. It was almost like a black black on an older iPad, especially if you get like a Pro with a better display than my iPad Air here. Uh, but yeah, it was like darker. So now it's more of a gray on that sidebar. So just minor change to that. We also have a new option in Safari to add a tab to a tab group. So if we have a tab open, we long hold on that menu bar, we have this new option to move to tab group when you had, go ahead and long press that. So you have that option and Apple has brought back the reload or refresh icon. So now if you're using a mouse or trackpad, you can hover over that URL bar and when you do, the reload icon appears. Whether you prefer that or we're just using like command R or whatever else, you know, that's your preference. But Apple has brought that back here in this beta, at least when you hover over it using that mouse or trackpad. Um, we also saw that iPadOS can now use the camera while presenting multiple views or multiple windows. So this was a problem before and Apple mentioned this in the notes. So cameras can now be working while presenting multiple windows on iPad. And 
If we take a look at messages here on iPad, you can see that they now highlight in blue when they're selected so you know kind of what conversation you're in. So in this case, I'm talking to Benny. If I go up here and check with my wife, Faith, hers uh, highlights in blue as well. So whether you have the pin conversations or your conversation is down below, they will now highlight in blue. And this is pretty regardless of whether you're looking at um, iPad or iPhone, but Apple has improved the way that you can set up a new device while coming from a beta. As an example, say this fall, I'm going to my iPhone 13 and I've got my iPhone 12 Pro Max still running developer beta. But when the iPhone 13 comes out, it's obviously going to arrive not with a beta. Your typical workflow then would be I'd have to take the new iPhone 13, I'd have to erase it, or not erase it, but set it up as a, a new device with just nothing on there, download the beta profile, update to the beta, then erase it, and then migrate from my old phone because I'm going beta to a beta. Uh, but now Apple has a new option. So if I'm going from a beta to this brand new device, it's gonna say, hey, you're coming from a beta. Do you wanna upgrade this new device to the beta before you transfer your information? and you just say yes, and it uh, streamlines the whole process. So a lot better if you're migrating from a beta to a new device. Good job on 9to5Mac for finding that uh, inside of the iOS 15 code. So that pretty much covers it. That is what is new here in iPadOS 15 beta 2 as well as iPhone uh, or iOS 15 beta 2. Let me know over on Twitter if you found any other changes or what your new favorite features are of iOS 15. And stay tuned to Apple Insider. I've got a lot more videos coming down the line very soon.